You're watching this on your electronic device. And guess what? It's watching you. Mass surveillance has become a buzz phrase. We say it and hear it so often, we seem to forget that the government is trampling on our Fourth Amendment rights. Maybe it's because so many expected that things couldn't get any worse after Bush, but they did. America's surveillance state has expanded under President Barack Obama. But how exactly did we end up with the biggest domestic spying apparatus in U.S. history? Let's take it back to George W. Bush. Following the 9-11 attacks, President Bush authorized the use of warrantless domestic wiretapping with the goal of preventing future attacks. And three weeks after that, he signed the Patriot Act into law. The Patriot Act allowed for questionable practices like indefinitely detaining immigrants and allowing cops to search your home or office without your consent. And these provisions would have a major impact on several pre-existing laws, like the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1978 or FISA, which established procedures for authorizing the use of intelligence gathering. These security reforms set the stage for American surveillance, and in 2002, the Pentagon rolled out something called the Total Information Awareness Program. The program wanted to collect virtually every kind of information available about Americans. We're talking about everything from medical prescriptions to browser history to even individual DNA. The program ended in 2003 after it was blasted for its intrusiveness. Hmm, I wonder why. But while TIA was disbanded, its technology wasn't. In fact, in 2005, the New York Times revealed that the National Security Agency was spying on thousands of Americans, and it's believed that it was actually using TIA technology. And less than two years later, we learned that surveillance had expanded to millions. The NSA had backdoor access to databases at Verizon, AT&T, and BellSouth. And in July 2008, these telecom companies even received immunity from wrongdoing for collaborating with the government when the FISA Amendments Act was passed. And guess who voted in favor of the act? None other than presidential candidate Barack Obama. Before he was President Obama, Senator Obama actually had a history of voting against heightened surveillance policies. I will provide our intelligence and law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to track and take out the terrorists without undermining our Constitution and our freedom. But he changed his tune just for months before becoming Commander-in-Chief. And well into his presidency, he said, It's important to re recognize that uh, you can't have 100% security and also then have 100% privacy and zero inconvenience. While Obama didn't agree to extending immunity to telecom companies, he did vote yes to the FISA Amendments Act, which increased the government's ability to eavesdrop on domestic communications without a warrant. But when Director of National Intelligence James Clapper was asked in a 2013 Senate Intelligence Committee hearing about whether or not the NSA was collecting information on Americans, he had a lot to say. No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. He kind of lied. Because as we learned shortly after in June 2013, thanks to NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, there actually was a pretty intensive and vast surveillance program, PRISM. While the program started in 2007 under Bush, the Obama administration expanded it. And PRISM isn't just backdoor data collection from telecommunications companies. The NSA is getting your information from internet giants like Google, AOL, Apple, and Yahoo. So that means they can snoop in your non-encrypted chats and emails, and they can even access that MacBook camera you love so much. So given how alarmed many folks were after the Snowden revelations, what has the Obama administration done? In 2014, they made some reforms. For instance, now the NSA doesn't have as easy access to phone records as it did before. Instead, phone companies store the data, and if the government wants it, they have to get a warrant from a secret court. But were the reforms even helpful? I mean, after all, they only focused on a small part of the bigger data collection effort, and no surveillance program was even dismantled. And in May, a federal appeals court in New York ruled that NSA bulk surveillance is in fact illegal. The Patriot Act actually doesn't allow for it. But can our right to privacy still be saved? Do we need reforms? Or do we need something more? 